Tony D and Little Joan, and this is your Piney Podcast, all things South Jersey. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books, links in the description. Speaking of Pineys, it's the Pineys, books 1 through 11, available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. Let's get into the headline, South Jersey. As always, I start with the eh, the dark headlines, some of the crime and whatnot. Try not to go too dark with this. I, I, I like upbeat South Jersey stuff, but uh, you know, you might you might want to know a few crimes <laughs> that are happening. Four injured in rollover crash in Egg Harbor Township. Not good. Uh, four people, all 18 years age or younger, were injured in a crash in Egg Harbor. Oh, what a shock! What a shock. This is uh, Sunday. Oh, happened today. Jeez. Happened at 2.30 at Zion and Summers Point's May Landing Road. Uh, kids, slow down. Two New Jersey police chiefs are facing misconduct and other charges. Wow. New Jersey authorities Wednesday arrested a small-town police chief, charging him with sexually assaulting subordinates over more than a decade while also announcing misconduct charges against another police chief who recently retired. Wow. Uh, this uh, Attorney General Matthew Placken said that Manville Police Chief Thomas Herbst, 55 of Bridgewater, New Jersey, was arrested earlier Wednesday and faces multiple counts of sexual assault, official misconduct, and other similar charges. Herbst lawyer Jim Ronco uh, said at a phone interview that his client categorically denies engaging in non-consensual sex with any woman. He said Herps was released from jail after initial court appearance. Placken also said official misconduct, tampering with records and witnesses and other charges were filed in state court against former Howe Police Chief Andrew Kudrick, 49, of Farmingdale. Um... Robert K. Honecker Jr., Kudrick's attorney, said in a phone call his client denies the allegations and that Kudrick has fallen into political disfavor. He intends to vigorously defend against these charges. Well, that's possible, too. I mean, these guys are close enough to politics that they could... Uh, I, I know a little uh, scuttlebutt from a certain South Jersey town, which I won't reveal because my friend worked there. And... Um, yeah, they do get into it sometimes in a ridiculous level. Uh, some of the small towns, the stuff that goes on in South Jersey, I mean, you wouldn't believe. Well, you probably would because you live here too if you're watching this thing. Right, Joan? What what happened, little Joan? You want to hear more scuttlebutt? Here, come over here. Your, your breath stinks on ice, by the way. Um, so it kind of doesn't surprise me if it's true or false. But moving on, South Jersey Carnival canceled night af after night of arrest, fights and arrest. This was in Washington Township on Saturday. Uh, Washington Township High School football and marching band Spring Carnival was canceled after several fights broke out and multiple arrests were made. Large crowds overcame the annual parade, which began on Tuesday and was slated to have its last day Saturday comprised largely of people from other towns. Yeah, this has been going on for God knows how long. Um, rumors, bodies, uh, not just in that town, I just mean in general. Bodies buried behind Atlantic County, New Jersey nursing home? Jesus. Wow. This was this is a place formerly known as the Meadowview. Hmm. Well, it sounds like somebody ought to start digging things around and checking that out. Uh, so the company was hired by Camden Archdiocese to check the grounds of the Atlantic County burial grounds on Dolphin Ave for bodies. And then check behind a nursing home and guess what they found. Bodies, lots of bodies. Oh, they did find it. Magnetic resonance was conducted in the area where it was proposed to build and nothing was found. So the next step will be ground penetrating radar. Nothing is planned for burial ground yet. Hmm. So nothing was found or something was found. I don't understand. This is a very confusing. Oh, that's the rumor, I guess. The rumor is they found bodies and then 
apparently they didn't, but who knows? Maybe they're covering that up? I, I don't know. Sounds weird. So it could be another folktale, though. Evesham police investigating biased graffiti on a park picnic table? Really? This is the best you... This is the most important thing these people have to do, doggy. Bias graffiti. Come on. In a statement released to the press, the police department expressed its strong stance against bias crimes, stating they take such an investigation very seriously. Someone wrote a naughty word on a picnic bench. <laughs> Please. Anyone with information regarding this incident is encouraged. Come forward for our investigation. We, we, uh, meanwhile, we'll be on Facebook looking for other bad words. Uh, PA man sentenced for shootout with South Jersey police officers in 2021. Wow. That, uh, that's terrible. He wounded one of them. Who the hell was this guy? Uh, he pleaded two count to two counts of first degree attempted murder. DeSanto was accused of punching, tasing, and shooting his girlfriend with a shotgun. On July 3rd. On August 23rd. They didn't arrest him then? Jeez. He was under surveillance and fled from Pennsylvania State Police. Jesus. This was in Falcroft, PA? I know a little bit about Falcroft. Uh, DeSanto then drove to New Jersey and fled from that stolen police vehicle with some protect. What? Hold on. Plainclothes Falcroft PA officer driving an unmarked SUV soon spotted DeSanto in the borough and picked up the pursuit. The SUV's front bumper hit the wheel of DeSanto's motorcycle and DeSanto crashed. When he saw DeSanto had a gun in his hand, the officer took cover behind his vehicle and DeSanto allegedly climbed in the officer's Chevy Tahoe and drove off. The officer fired on the vehicle in an effort to stop him because the Tahoe had weapons on board. Jesus, dude. Why don't you back your... Why don't you take the keys out of the damn car? <laughs> Unbelievable. So he drove off in a stolen police vehicle. This is this guy's a nut, in my view. So he was sentenced to 25-year aggregate sentence. 12 and a half years for further blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, 12 and a half years on each first-degree murder and attempted murder count to run consecutively. So, in other words, it's a two-for-one sale. DeSanto must also serve two separate five-year terms of parole supervision, which also run consecutively, for a total of 10 years upon his release from prison. Oh, wait. Consecutively? Doesn't that mean they run together? Or no, they run one after another. Okay, so he serves 25 years. Then he gets out and he's on probation for 10 years. Yeah, assuming he doesn't get out early for good behavior. Sounds sounds like a guy I trust. You know, after he settles down a few years in the joint. I'm sure he'll be, I'm sure he'll be in a great mood. <laughs> Three juveniles arrested, one officer hurt, as brawls forced closure of Carnival of Washington Township. So a little more detail there. Geez, one officer hurt. I don't know. They always add that kind of count. Can you imagine? Uh, what is this place? The Cherry Hill Mall? Uh, protesters demand removal of trans-identified males from New Jersey women's prison. I tweeted this out. Good for you, ladies. This is a nightmare that they put trans women in with the regular women in a prison where they can't escape. That's just... It's a nightmare, okay? And these women, we we just had, uh, James O'Keefe did a story about it and interviewed some of the women. And it's like, yeah, they're afraid. They're afraid because some of these guys are, excuse me, doing horrible things to women, I'll say, criminally, sexually assaulting them. Uh, and then they have this scam where they're going to get some woman pregnant and sue the sue the state over the baby what a nightmare and and all this could easily be avoided if our stupid stupid governor wasn't virtue signaling 
All you'd have to do is create a separate wing. Create a separate wing for the trans wing. That's it. Or you could just, oh, I don't know, put people in the wings based on their biological sex. Oh, but since you can't do that, just create a separate wing. Look, there are some instances where you have gay guys who are extremely, I'll say, feminine. And they're probably not good at protecting themselves. And you probably have some trans women, maybe one or two, I don't know. But you probably have people who at least think they're trans and they're, again, very feminine. They're not very strong. They're not going to defend themselves very well against other men. But they're way stronger than the women. So put them in their own wing. Put Have a wing, have an LGBTQ wing with just males. Um, I don't see what the problem is. I don't see how that's discriminatory. I don't see why we're catering to criminals in prison. It's insane. This plan could really cut taxes for many New Jersey residents. Okay, what's the plan? It's a tax break. This is the state and local tax deduction. Uh, Rep. Josh Gottmer, D. 5th District, introduced a measure to have the SALT deduction reinstated. Good. Great. It's the SALT Deductibility Act. Allow families to fully deduct their state and local taxes, their property taxes and state income taxes, and their federal income terms. That, that sounds awesome. Let's do that. <laughs> let's let's initiate it that wow the democrats are this is a democrat proposing this huh well good for you i mean i i think there's taxation is theft in general and the, you know the whole system's all screwed up but sure why not um and then, and then he says, the red states stick it to us. They gutted state and local tax deduction, capped it out at 10 grand. That means the taxes went up for many of our families. Now, if you were running your state properly, that wouldn't even impact you. But let's let's do less taxes. I'm for less taxes. So, yeah, sure, more deductions. Sure, make it complicated. You know what you could do is not collect the taxes to begin with. If we're going to deduct them anyway, why do you collect them? And then we have to deduct them and get them back anyway. How about this? How about don't collect them? And then what? You know what? You don't need this to, as many state workers to collect taxes because you're not collecting as many. You don't need any if you don't collect any. New Jersey law, don't wear this while committing a crime. Seems like a weird tip, but okay. It's illegal to wear a bulletproof vest while committing a serious crime, such as murder, robbery, and sexual assault or kidnapping. Sounds like that's when you would need a bulletproof vest, but okay. Uh, one can also be cited for wearing armor during an attempt at one of those crimes. Okay. According to Bulletproof Zone, wearing a body vest while committing a crime can result in more fines and, serve and time served for criminals. Yeah, it seems like a weird rule. So, I don't know. I, I, I. It seems like a pointless distinction, <laughs> really. I would say if you're committing a crime, you're committing a crime. Whether or not you're wearing a bulletproof vest has nothing to do with it. Contactless policing, New Jersey proposals calls for fewer traffic stops. No, what it's calling for is a robot to tell you you've been speeding. And I am completely against this, 100%. So, yeah, this is terrible. And guess what? If you have the robot do it, you know, they're trying to do it because there's a disproportionate targeting of black drivers. Oh, okay. Then have the robot do it. And then you're going to tell us the robot's racist? Because guess what's going to happen? Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Um, we're already monitored 24-7 on most of the cameras all over the road in every city. So, no, I'm completely against this. I'm against this. Let's not do this. Let's not leave our, you know, fines up to the AI or every time you drive through a toll booth, it, oh, you're going over the speed limit. There's another $50.
yeah, that's what it's going to turn into. Absolutely do not vote for this. Um, is there a proposal? Better not be a proposal. According to Salvation and Social Justice, a nonprofit in Trenton, municipalities across the nation have been discussing whether or not police interaction is necessary to deal with minor traffic uh, fences. How about uh, don't bother with them? There, there's a cure. Don't bother with them. Will South Jersey judge who put feet up on desk and didn't wear robes to court be punished? Seems weird that they would do that. Um, Superior Court Judge Michael Kassler described his behavior as misconduct. I mean, they found Kassler had violated two counts of a formal complaint that addressed his behavior over three months in 2021. It's a weird weird case. Why would you not wear anything? Was it that hot? I mean, wear underwear at least, dude. You know, wear shorts. You can wear shorts, I'm sure. Uh, we're in the pines, so of course there have been fires. 1,600 acres burned in Little Egg Harbor. Um, so that was near County Route 539. It's been reopened. Please use caution. Firefighters may periodically conduct work along the side of the road. Uh, they achieved 100% containment, so good. Um, this happens in the pines all the time, every year. It's a little early, but stubborn wildfire in West Milford, New Jersey, has more fires dot the state. So watch out for that. Lack of rain over the last 10 days. I think we're good now after yesterday. Holy crap, uh, what a rain rainstorm that was. New Jersey DEP just fined itself for clear-cutting wetlands forests home to native species. Nice going, idiots. The Department of Environmental Protection. Oh, we're, we cut down too many things. It, it fined itself for violating its own regulations. The agency clear-cut trees in the Glassboro Wildlife Management. Why would why would you ever clear-cut? Why are you cutting trees? Why is the Department of Environmental Protection cutting down trees? That's nuts. They cut down a mature forest and wetlands. Well, what did you do with those trees? Why did you do this? Why are you finding yourself? We end up paying for it. Oh, yeah, we find ourselves. Oh no. Who who cares? Why wasn't somebody fired? That's what I want to know. Of course, the DEP did not self-report the incident. They were notified by multiple complaints from environmental groups. So you didn't even catch yourself, but you find yourself. This is like investigating yourself. What good does this do? Who gets the fine money? <laughs> the state? Oh, you, you are the state. It's unbelievable. Everyone everyone connected to this should be fired. Should be fired. Somebody should lose their job. Dolphins in New Jersey, you can now see them in the Raritan, and that's not good. A pod of common dolphins caught on video playfully swimming in a Raritan video may bring a smile to New Jersey residents who have been following the news of dead and stranded mammals winding up on the state's beaches. But this may not be good news after all. That seemingly happy group of dolphins swimming in New Brunswick and Highland Park were first spotted on Tuesday. Uh, it's common for dolphins to be in the Northwest Atlantic Ocean. However, it's unusual for them to be found inshore in waters and rivers. It can be harmful. Extended exposure to freshwater environments can cause skin lesions on dolphins. Oh, no. Uh, gee, I wonder why they're in the river. Uh, possibly because they're not building wind turbines there. Hold on, I'm gonna have to deal with that. Joan! Hang on, thingies. That's a very bad dog, Joan. Sorry, everybody. Now you don't get down. Don't be very bad. Go to sleep. Cranky. <sighs> okay. Sorry about that. Taylor Swift, a Jersey girl. Who knew? No. 
jump. You really, uh, she's been bad today. I sit on my lap and go to sleep. I dare you to bark now. I dare you. I double dog dare you to bark in my face. Then you'll be in big trouble. Then you'll go on the bed. You'll go to sleep. Sorry. Um, so, you're saying uh, Taylor Swift was a Jersey girl? Stone Harbor, New Jersey was a Taylor Swift summer haunt before she was famous. Oh, she must be rich then, because Stone Harbor is full of rich people. It's not like Bon Jovi and Bruce Springsteen. They were playing poor places, but now Bruce Springsteen couldn't be more rich and uh, charges uh, ungodly amounts for tickets, in my view. Speaking of which, Murphy creates Springsteen Holiday in New Jersey. Uh, another waste of money. Um, like if Springsteen, I don't know, gave the state $20 million to build a, I don't know, a park or something, then maybe, but this is just, this is just Murphy looking for clicks, essentially. Most haunted house in New Jersey is very popular tourist attraction. Um, let me guess, let me guess. It could be a lot of different places. My, my first pick would be the Seven Stars Tavern. My second pick would be... Uh, the physics house in Cape May, but let's see. Uh, bu 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 bu. It's a very touristy area in South Jersey. Oh, that's sounding like. No, not that one. Oh, we're doing Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Yep, the physics estate in Cape May. It is very haunted. Um, so it dates back to 1879. And uh, it's located at 1048 Washington Street. Not only is it considered to be the most haunted house in New Jersey, but it's one of the most beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's in Cape May, so all the houses there are pretty nice. Um, who knew the Jersey Devil likes coffee? Try it in Swedesboro, New Jersey. Hens and Honey Shop, Jersey Devil Coffee. Okay. So uh, this uh, place is known for its um, insane, uh, it's called Hens and Honey Shop, located in Swedesboro. They have 25 different flavors of drink and types to choose from. I've never heard of this place. I'll have to check it out. The Jersey Devil Latte, two shots of espresso, your milk of choice, and then it starts to get interesting. Inspired by the legendary cryptid himself, the folks over at Hens and Honey want to make sure they were serving up quite a bite with this one. So the secret is there's a bit of cayenne pepper in it to spice the coffee. So it's, it's going to be a spicy coffee. And uh, it's topped off with pine nuts. Oh, neat. That's kind of cool. So uh, check that out at Hens. What is it? Hens and Honey in uh, Swedesboro. Uh, next time I'm there, I'll have to go. The fascinating story of the most historic restaurant in New Jersey. Is this the place, the Cranberry Inn? I'm going to guess. Uh, da, 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 da. Medham for your culinary adventure. I don't know this place. The restaurant experts chose as New Jersey's most historic place. Oh, no, wait. It's called the Black Horse Tavern and Pub. All right. Where is that, I wonder? Black Horse Tavern and Pub. Oh, that's very fancy. Very fancy looking. It is... Uh, I'm not sure where it is. They're not saying. What town is it in? Let's go to contact. Oh, got a bug on me. Ugh. What the heck was that? I'm having all sorts of problems, Piney. Sorry. Um, this is in... Jeez, it doesn't say. It's got a 973 um, number, so it's closer to the middle of the state. Here's the location here. All right, here we go. Medham, New Jersey. <laughs> oh, it's in Medham. That's what that was for. How the heck did I get a bug on me? Is that coming off of you, little Joan? I bet it is. Jeez. Now I'm freaked out. 
Uh, so Medham, New Jersey, 973. Okay, that's got to be like in the middle of the state. I'll have to check that out later, but cool. It looks like a cool place. Looks very historic. Do we have a, a, a menu? I don't have a menu. Oh, wait, here we go. Menu. All right. Ooh, food menu, beverage menu. So quesadilla, 1350. Whew. Seems like a lot for a quesadilla. Stout braised mussels, seven dollars. Well, that that seems very reasonable by comparison. Fried calamari, honey garlic sauce, sixteen bucks. That seems high. Mozza, crispy mozzarella, Parmesan balsamic reduction, arugula salad, thirteen fifty. Okay, maybe. Warm jumbo pretzel sticks, thirteen dollars with chill chili queso dip. These are all the appetizers. Chicken wings, fourteen fifty. That's a little high, but this is a high end place, I think. Uh, let's see, soups, chili, nine bucks. Crock of French onion soup, eight bucks. Caesar salad, twelve fifty. Pub favorites, cheese and wine, bubbly shrimp, fifteen. Hey, might as well go for the shrimp. You're gonna pay thirteen, fourteen fifty for wings. I'd rather get shrimp. Chicken pot pie, twenty one fifty. Raw bar. Oh, these are, yeah, they don't even put the prices on these, right? Because <laughs> it's like, well, we'll see what day it is. See what day you come in. The pub burger also doesn't have a price. The impossible burger is eighteen fifty. It'd be impossible to get me to pay for it. The turkey burger with tzatziki sauce is fifteen fifty. It's not too bad. The bison burger is nineteen fifty. I'm gonna, I'll ballpark the. Uh, I don't know why the pub burger doesn't have a price. I'm gonna ballpark it at like twenty though. Prime rib panini though is nineteen. Might as well get that entree. Stack baby ribs thirty dollars and fifty cents. Filet mignon forty two. Pub yeah this is a this is a this is a, a super high end place so. But okay. All right. Moving on. Saddle Hill Winery in Voorhees grows towards spring 2024 opening. Large tasting room under construction. So look for that, Saddle Hill. Uh, league host info session on ranked choice voting. I say no to this now. Um, because we'll turn into California. It'll be nothing but Democrats. Um, if you want more choices, uh, create another party. How about that? Possible reasons why hitting an animal in New Jersey is surprisingly low. All right. I, I don't know how you calculated the odds. Recent survey of 50 states puts our nation's capital in order of state most likely to hit an animal. Uh, it's surprisingly low. Some possible theories. Uh, here are the states where you're most likely to hit an animal. DC is 51. Nevada is 50. Hawaii 49. Arizona 48, Florida 47, really? Alaska 46, California 45, Washington 44, Connecticut 43, New Mexico 42, Colorado 41, Utah, New Jersey's 39. Chance of hitting an animal 1 in 94. That is a very low risk by comparison of other states. I mean, I would have thought we would have been higher on the list. But let's look at the, the worst state. I think I scrolled down too far. Oh my goodness. I went, I went totally into another article, I think. Uh, there we go. Montana's number two, West Virginia. Huh. I guess. I mean, it is very rural. One in 35. A uh, small town in South Jersey already has 20 warehouses. Residents are pushing back on a proposal for nine more. What town is this? This is Old Man's Creek. Oh, I think I talked about this in a previous article. It's in Salem County. Uh, a farm fields across from the home of Walton built for his family 20 years ago could be replaced by warehouses. How many more warehouses do we need in this friggin' state? 
Keep Pedrick Town Green. No more warehouses. I agree. Too many warehouses. Nine more? You already got 20, and you're going to build nine more. And you're just taking up farmland. I, I don't like it. Here's another one. Self-storage facility proposed for South Jersey Diner site. Okay, well, you're building it on the former site. Historic Bishop 4th Street Diner lifted away after more than five decades. Oh, I guess they're... The developer wants to replace the former Teddy's Diner with a self-storage facility on 130. That's where they belong. Place that's already, you know. It would need a blah, 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 blah. Route 130 site devours diners. Teddy's Diner opened in 2020, but did not survive the pandemic. Well, we do have plenty of other diners, but I'd rather you take up space that was for a diner than, you know knock down the woods. Jersey Girls Female Fitness Center opened in Westville plus Giant Fitness in Blackwood update. So, how's this going to go? <laughs> I Look, I think women deserve their own fitness center for just women, biological women. So, if we've got a whole trans debate going on here, it's going to get messy. So, I hope you win in court. The inevitable court thing. Two South Jersey towns are privatizing their EMS and layoffs are coming. Who will run it? Okay. Both Borden towns have approved privatization of its shared ambulance service in hopes of saving money. Okay. Hope that works out. Support your local EMTs, I say. Morel mushrooms popping up in New Jersey. What you need to know to hunt them is a tasty springtime finds already been spotted in New Jersey this April as hunters seek them. Be very careful when you do this. You got to know what you're doing. Um, so, I, my dad does it, or he used to. I mean, his eyesight isn't as great. Uh, <laughs> I think a little bit, but uh, he would he would pick like bushels of them. He knew what he was doing, and we would eat them all the time, and they were great. But please, please learn learn the the the, the what you're doing, and be very careful. Uh, ShopRite in Gibbstown, last day in April 13th, Woolworths, which opens May 24th. Jeez, they're going to be without a ShopRite for a month? What the hell are people going to eat? Oh, man, have to go to another ShopRite. What a nightmare. Rutgers deal could be game changer across the U.S. as part-time faculty win protections. I mean, this is what you get, uh, universities. You have all the money, so... The workers want more money, and times are tough. Um, I don't have any sympathy for the colleges. Um, one of the reasons I didn't become an adjunct professor is I saw, oh my God, everybody's going to be an adjunct professor. That's what it looked like to me. I think that's still going to happen, and this is just going to make college more expensive. You know that, right? They ain't going to cut anything. They're not going to miss a beat. They're just going to say, oh, okay, we have to pay you this. 10000 more dollars? Okay, raise the tuition. That's all it's going to do. I mean, you're not accomplishing much of anything other than lining your own pocket. Avoid Marsa, Marsa, Marsa syndrome at Rutgers Camden, an editorial. Uh, this is talking about the strike. It's expected to end with a just announced agreement, but the academic staff at the two smaller campuses want you to know they've been fighting a battle with in a battle that is unlikely to end even if instructors as a whole have attained economic justice they seek. During picketing, you could almost hear Camden and Newark professors and adjuncts whining New Brunswick, New Brunswick, New Brunswick, as if each is a sibling to the Brady Punch sister who got the attention. Really? What a reference. That reference is so old it creaks. Maybe you could have updated that a little bit. It's tough when you get referred to as a satellite campus or community college. Blah, blah, blah. Wine, wine, wine. Maybe if you guys actually taught things instead of teaching everybody's pronouns, uh, you wouldn't be in this situation, I'm going to guess. Rita's Water Ice in Blackwood hopes for late April opening at new location. I'm not a huge Rita's guy because I, I like things a little more high end. I'm not totally against it. Rita's is the sort of place I go to if other people are going there and I don't want to be a jerk and insist on going to Lena's or royal crown or something but yeah it's not it's definitely not my first choice 
New Jersey lawmakers push for moratorium on the wind tur turbine sonar mapping as whales and dolphins die. Yeah, take your time. Just why don't you clear the entire ocean of uh, living creatures and then then you could stop it, right? You effing idiots. Friggin' do this. Friggin' do it already. Please call and write about this because this really needs to stop. And then we won't have uh, dolphins going up river trying to escape this stuff. Hole in the wall, hidden jam pizzeria in South Jersey. Uh, Palermo's in Borntown. That's not bad. I think I've been there. I'm almost sure I have. It looks good. Ow, man. What? I think I'm getting bit here. I have to check to see for bugs. I think, Joan, you, you brought some bugs to my lap. You were really, really making my life uh, crazy tonight. Basset Hounds ex Philly Mickey Moriandi highlights 37th Duda Parade in Atlantic City. Okay, so uh, here's the Duda Parade. I guess everybody's got their doggies out. I guess I could have brought Joan to this. <laughs> so. Um, Hundreds of dogs on her, mostly followed by their short-legged, floppy-deared friends on Saturday afternoon, the 37th annual Doodah Parade. Oh, it has to be Basset Hounds? Aw. Oh. Well, Joan would enjoy that. You would enjoy that anyway. You you just love other little doggies. They would be about your size. A little bigger. I'm not mad. I don't know. You, got, you had a bug on you, I think. Three of the smallest barbecue joints in New Jersey are in this small shore town. Hmm, where would this be? Let us see. Uh, Greenbrook, New Jersey. Right here in Ocean County, there's Dickie's Barbecue Pit in Whiting. Smokey's Craft Barbecue in Bay Hill. Bayville. Can't go wrong with that. However, did you know the little town of Point Pleasant, which is known for world-class family beach town, is also home of the best barbecue joints? Oh, okay. So Jersey Shore Barbecue. That does look fantastic. Uh, Shore Points Barbecue. That also looks fantastic. And Martelli's Tiki Bar. Ooh. Jenks on Jenks Boardwalk. Pulled pork sandwiches. Mmm. Num, 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 num. I wonder what this costs, though. That looks amazing, though. This is the sampler. Uh, what do you get? Baby back ribs. Chopped barbecue chicken. Carolina pulled pork. Brief beef brisket, brisket, creamy mac and cheese, and street corn. Yeah, sign me up for this. Sign me the way the heck up. Will uh, What will Guy Fieri dine on when he revisits this popular South Jersey diner? Okay, diners, drive-ins, and dives will feature the Vince Town Diner. Oh, I love that place. That's a good place. What will he eat? Well, he won't eat eggs, because he hates eggs. Um... So I don't know. New episode uh, featuring our beef stroganoff and our awesome breakfast sandwich, The Aristocrat. It's finally set to air. This is April 21st. The Aristocrat is made with two fried eggs. He hates eggs. <laughs> American cheese, pork roll, oh, okay, bacon jam, and baby arugula on a grilled ciabatta. Mmm, num, num, num. I have to get over there and have one. Six states considering bills to restore gold as and silver as legal tender. New Jersey's one of them. This could be good news, New Jersey. Good news. Um, you know, when the economy collapses and we still have a little bit of money. Gabriel Ta Davies Tavern is a historic gen in Gloucester Township. Spring open houses this weekend. Oh, April 15th and 16th. Oh, today was the last day. <laughs> Oh, man, this is a great place. It's a nice little park. Oh, man. Yeah, I guess we missed it, but uh, it's really cool. I mean, you could still go there and check it out. The park, you know, you can check out the outside. It's a really nice park. Uh, scoop, 19 ice cream shops in South Jersey to get your favorite treat. A Laura Chris Kitchen home homemade ice cream in Pittman. Ooh, that sounds good. Cherries Ice Cream, Water Ice in Cherry Hill. Cool Scoops Ice Cream Parlor in North Wildwood. Cream Valley Custard in Woodstown. You're not getting down, Joan. Dipsy's Custard and Ice Cream in Mantua. 
I think I've seen Dippy's. I don't think. Oh, Duffer's Restaurant and Old Fashioned Ice Cream Parlor in Wildwood. I've been to Duffer's a bunch of times. In fact, fans of the Pineys, uh, Book 5, um, there's a, a fake restaurant I put in there called Captain Coots. I based Captain Coots off of Duffer's, which I used to go to all the time as a kid. The Hobby Horse Ice Cream Parlor in Ocean City. Holiday Ice Cream in Edgewater Park. Lateria in Swedesboro. Maple Shade Custard Stand in Maple Shade. I've been there. That's pretty good. Um, Margate Dairy Bar and Burger in Margate City. Mr. Softy in Pensacola. Of course, everybody's been there. Oh, Royal Crown. My favorite. Ice Cream and Grill in Hamilton. It does have a grill. See, there it is. That's the emptiest you'll ever see it in off-season. Scoopy's Ice Cream and Water Ice in Sewell. I think I've been there. I think I've been to Scoopy's. Serene Custard and Golf in Vineland. Springer's Homemade Ice Cream in Stone Harbor. Um Ice Cream Parlor in Burlington City. Verona Custard in Vineland. Vincent's Homemade Ice Cream in Mount Holly. And that's it. Good stuff. Uh, don't snooze on these 16 Northfield gems. This is Northfield, New Jersey. Uh, on the way to the shore. Awesome things to do in Northfield. There's a weird article. I guess they're, I guess they're trying to beef up Northfield. Birch Grove Park. Okay. Bootleggers Liquor Outlet. Well, geez, that's okay. I mean, uh, it's, it's just a liquor store, but fine. Cheeto Burrito. I wouldn't have put liquor store second. Cheeto Burrito. Okay, maybe. Um, Christine's Italian Pastry Shop. A little lackluster on the sign, but fine. Oh, it's nice inside. Look at those cookies. Uh, Grace and Glory Yoga Studio. Greens and Grains. High Tech Salon and Spa. Little Italy, Italian Ristorante. Mazza's Farm Market, Bakery and Coffee House. That looks familiar. I may have been there. Sage Jewelers, The Bake Works, Tilton Market, Tilton Road Golf Range, Tilton Square Theater. I definitely been there. Valentina's Restaurante Italiana, Ventura's Offshore Cafe. Okay, looks nice. I mean, Northfield's nice. Weird to do a whole article just about it. One of America's most beautiful restaurants in America is right here in New Jersey. Uh, let's see. Probably going to be in Cape May. I'm going to guess the Lobster House? Nope, it's Braddock's Tavern, number 12. It is very nice in Medford. Oh, and there's more. Cafe Ma Matisse in Rutherford. That's up north. The Frog and the Peach in New Brunswick. I've heard of that. Never been. Oh, I may have been. Wait, I may have been to the Frog and Peach. And uh, number one, Cafe Aldo Lamberti. I mean, it is very nice. In Cherry Hill, I mean, it's nice. I don't know if it's the most beautiful. Um, that's weird. That's a weird choice. I would put it on the list. I don't think I'd put it as number one. Teen Arts Festival draws nearly a thousand students to downtown Millville. Everybody is human, I guess. <laughs> and finally. New Jersey Shore Town builds cross-shaped pier to express Christian mission. And for some reason, people are up in arms about it, and I'm not sure why. Do we have a picture of the damn thing? You don't even have a picture of it. Okay, I don't know why. I guess Breitbart couldn't get that picture. It was all over Twitter a couple of days ago. Yeah, it's like, it's also a practical, you know, thing. Because you build the, the pier out, and then you've got three branches going off it goes further and then the two branches going out so you could have people you know walking having private time in three different sections i mean not private private time but you know what i mean like you're walking on a pier you want to kind of like you know maybe you're with somebody or maybe you just want to be alone with your thoughts i mean it would look weird if you did say five at the end instead of three so the cross is sort of a natural shape for it so I don't know why people are up in arms. It's weird. I don't know why they bothered to even tell anybody that it was religious. They could have just kept it quiet. But um, why why bother? Uh, you know, getting mad about this. 
It's a, it's a weird thing to get them out. But like Christian leaders nationwide are applauding Ocean Grove, New Jersey. Okay, it's fine. I'm sure there's going to be lots of problems with it now. Uh, because, you know, people can't leave well enough alone, I'll say. But I hope things go well. Anyhow, that's it for me. Tony D and little Joan, who's driving me nuts. I know. Check us out on all our various links. That's it for the week. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you 